So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this this business with the uh, the matrix of the adjoint and the transpose and the whatever that's that's going on because there's a couple things to sort out here. So first off, I'm going to revisit this this example from uh, clip seven a two, and and we'll just uh, verify the stuff we've been talking about with the, with the matrices. So it's easiest to do this with uh, the standard matrix. So if we're thinking about this as, as matrix multiplication, then we want to figure out, okay, uh, how do we multiply the vector x1, x2, x3 uh, in order to get the vector that has um, uh, x2 plus 3x3 as the first coordinate and 2x1 as the second coordinate. And so we're gonna need a matrix that's two by three because the output has two and the input has three. Um, and so let's see, so what do we need to get that first entry? So if I'm looking at like the, the entries of this, this row here, giving me this entry, I'm gonna get, uh, I have no x1s and I have one x2 and I have three x3s. All right, so that tells me what I multiply by there. And then in order to get the second row, I'm gonna need two x1s and then none of anything else. Okay, um, now if I go to look at the uh, t star y, then we're gonna be multiplying y1, y2 and getting 2y1, sorry, 2y2, y1, 3y1. And so in order to get this, let's see, now I've got the uh, three by two matrix. Um, and for that first entry, I need uh, two y2s and no y1s. For my next entry, I need one y1 and no y2s. And for my last entry, I need three y1s and zero y2s. And so you can see that sure enough, actually the, uh, the one matrix is the transpose of the other matrix. And so that appears to work out. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what we see here is that the matrix of T star is the, uh, the transpose uh, of the matrix of T. Um, but in uh, 3114, we saw that um, the matrix of the dual of T is the transpose of the matrix of T. So what's going on here? Let's, let's sort this out. So we know that um, M as, as a linear map from uh, the space of linear maps to the collection of matrices. Uh, so in this uh, n by m matrices, it, this is an isomorphism. That's, that's um, the content of uh, well, 336 and 338 um, uh, proved that it's a, a linear mapping. And then uh, the, the isomorphism part comes by the dimension calculation in 340. Okay. So then if it's an isomorphism, then it, you think that um, if you have mt prime equal to mt star, then you could strip away the m's because if it's an isomorphism, it's invertible, and that means you can you can take the the m's off, right? So so the question is, does this mean that t star is equal to t prime? What the heck is exactly going on? Because how how can this be, right? Because um, we know that uh, t prime is a map from the dual of W to the dual of V. And the way that it works is that um, T prime of uh, a functional applied to the element V, this is obtained by precomposing by T, right? Um, 
and T star is just going between different spaces. T star is straight up going from W to V, not from W prime to V prime. So, so how do we make sense of this? Well, the situation it, that's going on is that when V and W are inner product spaces, then the Reese representation theorem says that V prime is isomorphic to V and W prime is isomorphic to W. Um, and we saw that uh, if, if we define phi sub v to be the, the map that takes uh, a little v and maps it to inner product against v, okay, this is an example Um, of this this isomorphism, this isomorphism right here. So now remember, when two spaces are isomorphic, there, there's not necessarily a unique isomorphism. You you should expect in general that there's lots of isomorphisms. In the in the proof of the Reese re representation theorem, we used one isomorphism because it makes for a nice simple proof. Um, but in the exercises following that section, there at the end there was a different isomorphism, and and it was this one. And this is the natural isomorphism, so it's sort of better to use here. So let's see what's going on in, in this case. Okay, so then if we take um, phi v of t star w, this is going to take some unpacking, and apply it to v. <laughs> so we've got maps that are mapping maps to mappings. It's going to be great. Um, now let's see, so, so what is this? So um, this is going to take us to inner product against V with T star W. So now that's by the definition of, of how I defined uh, uh, phi right here. Okay, now using the definition of the adjoint, we can move the T to the other side. And then if you look at this, now what are we doing? Uh, putting something into an inner product against W, that's phi sub Wing um, that thing uh, and applying it to the thing that got put in the inner product with the W, which was TV. Okay, and so now if you look at this, what have we done? We have um, precomposed with T. So this is actually T prime of phi of W applied to W to give a map that is then applied to V. Good God! Okay, so there's a lot of unpacking there, right? You, sh you should go through this derivation backwards and forwards a couple times just to get your mind straight because it's it's a bit nutty. But um, here, maybe this helps. For this this last part right here, think about how uh, T prime of, and then here's the functional that we're interested in. This is the functional applied, applied to precomposing with T. So that's, that's what uh, the dual map looks like in the case when the functional in question is inner product against the dude. All right. Um, so, so from this uh, hairy last uh, derivation here, since this is true for any V, and that's why I went as far as I did, because I, I we started with a thing that gets fed a V. 
and I wanted to end with it looking like a thing that gets fed a V. Now because this calculation is true for all V's, that means in the next line we can strip that part away and get VV T star W is equal to um, T prime of V of W applied to W. Okay, and so now this is true all through across W. And so since true for any W, we have uh, <clears throat> Vv composed with T star is equal to T star composed phi W. And so look at the levels on which things are transpiring. So on this first level where we first did all the hairy computation, this was an equality between numbers specifically in R. That's where that equality takes place. Then on this one right here, now we're looking at uh, equality of um, <coughs> functionals. We're actually in W prime, right? Both sides of that equation are things that eat elements of W and return a number. Um, and so down here at the end, now we're looking at equality of maps. And in particular, maps from W to V. Right? Um, and so, by the way, I should also say, probably a couple of you who, who are paying attention were like, hey, wait a minute, you were wrong in that first step. There should have been a conjugate over that. And that's correct. That's, that's, um, if we're working over the, if we were working over the complexes, which here we're not, we're, we're working over the reals and, uh, for this particular example. Um, but if, if we were working over the complexes here, So we would have to fix that, include the conjugate. Um, and then you would see that the uh, matrix of T star is equal to the matrix of T prime conjugate. Um, but we just saw that in the last video, so that, that should not be uh, any shock and surprise. Um, I did it without the conjugate in this case because uh, I started this whole thing off with the, the observation that we were looking at a situation where mt star was equal to mt prime. Because uh, <clears throat> that's what makes it look like there's a conflict, but there's not a conflict. So uh, the last thing that I wanna do is draw a diagram of this last equality because I love arrows, arrows are great. So we've got v getting mapped to v prime by phi sub v, that's what it does. It takes takes v to inner product against v, so it takes elements of v to linear functionals on v. Um, and then we've also got uh, w getting mapped to w prime by phi of w, does the same thing, takes w to inner product against w. And then we've got uh, maps from W to V given by T star and from W prime to V prime given by T prime. And I guess if you want to include it, the original map T, which somehow we don't even care about anymore, is going in this direction over here. So this is sort of like a roadmap for what's going on. And the upshot is that this is a commutative square. And so this equality right here is saying that 
this square is commutative. All right, so there's a whole lot of structure in there, lots of good stuff to meditate on. I, I recommend go sitting under a tree uh, and staring at this for, for a couple hours. Um, and so you should also, you should look at 7a problem 20 for details. Um, and then th this also references uh, theorem 710. All right, have fun.